Hey guys, welcome to Traditional Bow Hunting Wilderness Podcast. This is Jason Sam Kovac. Today we're going to talk about repurposing um, other arrows or redoing your arrows, whatever way you want to cut it here. I have some arrows um, that you can see here. we got a bunch of arrows, a bunch of stuff laying here, and uh, we're going to dive into this. But basically what I have is these are my arrows that I use this season, and uh, they're getting pretty beat up. And so we got to redo these arrows and get them done. This one here, uh, pig is what that ended up getting ripped out from. It actually was lost in the water. Um, and so something chewed that feather off. It was lost in the water, and I found it my next trip down there. It had passed through and killed a pig, and I couldn't find it because it was then it was there was under the water. Water receded, and I found it later, but that had been chewed off and gone. This one was left, you know, it passed all the way, sunk into a pig all the way up to about here, and as he ran off, he kind of wrecked the feathers on that one, so that has to be redone. Um, this one's just getting a crap beat out of it, feathers are about done so it's time to replace those um, this one here same thing just getting beat up and I'm getting ready to redo them so we're gonna replace those these three here are from my daughter's when she was shooting a recurve which she doesn't shoot a recurve anymore um, she she still got a recurve um, and she's got other arrows that we made up but these were three that I actually four that I originally made for her out of my shafts to get her started way back in the day I'm going to cut them down to my size I made them long so they flew good out of her bow but we are going to cut them down to my size so they work for my shafts um, and reuse those. And then these three are the last three that I have of Keegan's arrows um, that he hunted with. <clears throat> the, I had uh, five or six more of the other ones and like I said, lost them. I'm down to uh, this one right here is the last one I have of his. Um, is that one there but uh, uh and then so I have these three more so I'm those are always my go-to's. Okay, these are the go-to arrows um, for him. And I want them in the quiver with me. Um, so I'm going to repurpose these two, but his two as well. You can see how long his were set up compared to mine. So they flew right out of his bow compared to Bella's. So they flew right out of their, her bow. So, um, but anyway, we're going to repurpose all these arrows here and get them cut down to the right size, have them set up like what I use. I'm going to fletch these a little differently though, too. I'm going to pull the inserts out of them, cut them down, use my double insert like I use in them so that they're uh, flying with the weight and setup that I want and how I make them. And then I'm going to do something more like this with the fletching because I do end up fletching shadows so much that I really hate scraping and fighting and trying to get these wraps off all the time just to refletch. So I'm going to go something kind of like this in yellow, but this is an arrow I made. A, it's a 400 spine. When I run out of these arrows, which is probably not anytime soon, they fly great out of my bows. These are 500 spine with my double insert. So my insert, ouch, that's so hot. My insert inside of there is like that inside of there so it's a long insert so it really cuts off you know that's why a 500 spine works perfect for me even with 450 grains up front is because i have so much of my 27 inch shaft three inches of it is non-flexible um so it works really good for me and my setup but when i'm done i got i think i got 40 of these 45 arrows in the house set up in these here's another 10 and i have uh one dozen more right here another dozen when i burn through those so probably two years from now i'm going to go to 400 spines which is this is actually one of my son's arrows that he shot out of his compound and i, I have two dozen of these 400 spine victories that when it's time when i'm all done with these and i switch i will set up to a 400 uh, spine arrow and i will go instead of doing a Double 200 insert, I'm going to go with a single 200, or a single 100 grain insert and a much heavier broadhead setup. Um, or I'm not quite sure how I'm going to work that, but that'll be my next step down the road. But I am going to use this kind of a combination here so that I can refletch these easily without having to remove the cap wrap. So there's something similar to this that I'm going to do here. I'm just not quite sure. It'll be in the chartreuse like I always do, but something along those lines is what I'm after. Uh, so we're going to uh, show you basically how to... The whole process on, on doing this stuff, if you want to repurpose these arrows, how to get the inserts out safely, how to uh, scrape the fletching off, how to get rid of the cap wraps, how to cut them down, the whole deal. I'm going to just show you everything and get these ready to be refletched. So I'm going to put you on a tripod, show you what we got. All right, first thing we're going to do, we got to get these inserts out of here, okay, this old insert. So what I have here is just a short broadhead adapter 
that I'm sticking in here so that I can heat this up. When I heat this up, it's, it's steel. It's going to transfer the heat into this brass and release this glue on here. Um, you could also take a drill bit. I'll show you both methods if they get sticky. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this. I'm going to light it up. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to have my pliers here ready. And I'm going to heat this without heating the carbon. See where the carbon is? My finger's there. There's no heat. No, no heat is getting to that carbon, so I'm not hurting the carbon. Instead, I can have my finger right there, okay? So I'm heating this up and letting that transfer through the shaft of that adapter into that brass insert to release that heat on there, okay? That's what I'm after. But like I said, I'm just heating that up so that there's no chance of me hurting that carbon. But it is going to release this glue. I use Gorilla Glue is what I'm using. Gorilla high, uh, Blue Impact Resistant Glue. That's what I use to glue my inserts in, and it works perfect. So we're going to heat that up a little bit. We're going to let it simmer for a second. It might take a second. And eventually here, that's going to give way. Not quite yet. Got to let that heat transfer all the way through that insert. But without getting hot enough that you're going to damage the, the, uh, the shaft itself. Honestly, it's okay on these because I'm going to cut them off anyway. I'm going to cut them back about that far. But if you weren't and you wanted to just remove that insert, this is the process you would go through. Like I said, no heat is getting to that, that carbon. And eventually it'll get to like there and it pops right out. See, there it is. So then that one is done and ready for cutting. Where's my cut pile? Right here. These are all my get ready to cut pile. And uh, so then, now then I gotta take it off of here, or you could just keep using new ones if you want, but I'm gonna unscrew this. Obviously this is hot, don't just grab this with your hands or you will not be a very happy person. So I'm gonna unscrew this out of here, and then I'm gonna stick it right in the next one and do it. Now on that one I'll show you the drill bit method. Because that does work fantastic as well too if they're a little stickier. So we take one of these. We're going to put this back in here. Again, the heat transfer is going through that shaft and going into that brass insert. So that's what we're looking for. So I'm going to put that back in there. We're going to heat that up. And then we're going to pull the knock off of this and use a drill bit to knock this insert out. I'll show you. And what's nice is if you do these all in succession, that adapter has still got a lot of heat built up into it, so it doesn't take quite as long. Okay, so it makes it a little easier. All right, so we got that on there. We got that hot. Now we're going to pull the knock off of this, and we're going to find a drill bit. So I'm going here to my drill bits, and I'm going to find a drill bit in here that's going to fit inside that shaft. Uh, let's see here. I'm guessing probably yay. Yep, so I have a drill bit here that's going to fit right inside that shaft. Do not put it tipped down. You want to put it back end, the flat end down. So I'm going to stick that in there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take and snap this down. Okay, I'm going to take it. I'm going to spin you so you can see here. This is just on my phone, so I don't know if you can actually catch this. But I'm going to take this and snap it. I got that drill bit in there. Right here is the end. And then, I'm, oh, there it is. whole thing just came out. Okay, inserts out, laying on the ground. And so did my drill bit, which I hope is sitting right there. I'm going to have to find in a minute. Um, but as you can see, that pops it right out. So for those stuck ones, that's a great way to get that insert out real easy. And uh, like I said, I have the insert and the adapter here. I do got to find my drill bit. But if they're stuck in there pretty bad, that system, as you just saw, works absolutely fantastic. Uh, or if you're using a glue that's too hard that you can't, uh, you know, you got to fight with it a little bit couple of knocks with that in there where you take that arrow, you know, you take that, you put that drill bit in and smack, 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 and usually they'll pop, you'll see it pop right out. That one went extremely easy. So I'll find that drill bit in a, in a little bit. Let's just get this going because we do have heat in this already. So we're just going to continue. Actually, I'm going to pause it there for you because so, you've already seen how to do that. I'm going to take the rest of the inserts out and then we'll be back. Okay, so we got all the inserts out of those ones. These ones are not losing the inserts because these are my double inserts. These are just got to be reflexed. But we got to get rid of this stuff that's fletching on here to do it. 
if you're not have if you don't have a cap wrap on it, it's real easy. You just take your razor blade here and you can just go right along there and a little bit of cleaning, you know, a little bit of scraping on there just like this to kind of get rid of that glue. Okay, you know, not hard, light pressure. You don't want to scratch the, the things up so you can actually flatten out like this to get rid of the glue after you get rid of the base. Okay, there's the glue on the base. And then just kind of work it like this so it's smooth. Get rid of all that little excess glue. And there, so now you're set. See, that's all, that feather's off there. It's real easy. So you go through and do that to those. That's pretty simple. Now when they have the wrap on them, they, they're a little bit more tricky. So you gotta cut that feather off. Okay, you get rid of your feathers. And then you gotta get rid of the wrap. Getting rid of the wrap is kind of a pain in the butt. So what I like to do is I first put a cut right down this wrap, kind of down the whole length here. So I got it on a couple sides. There's one. I go right down this side. And two, so I got a solid edge all the way down. And three, and I want this to go open all the way down like that. So you can see here, I have an open, you know, so I can peel this off in a few pieces. Then what I'm going to do up here where it's warm but not bad, I'm going to run this across there a couple of times just to kind of heat that wrap up. Notice I'm spinning it. I'm not heating the carbon. Some people do this with hot water too. Whatever you want. I'm just kind of heating that up a little bit. Then I'm going to take my thumb and I'm going to grab that. And hopefully I got it hot enough that I can pull that right off. See, that's because I got a white piece down here in the bottom. Now I grab this one. And hopefully, see, like that, I want it to come off in that whole strip right up through there is what I'm looking for. Right like that. And there's that one. We're going to come over here, get rid of this little white piece down here. And we're just going to work this stuff right off there. And see, it's going to start to cool on you. And when it does, it's going to get trickier. So you're going to have to reheat it. So I'm going to try and get all the white off. This lower level one before... I lose the heat in it. Now let's see if we can get one of these before we lose the heat in that. Now I see it's already sticking back down. So I'm going to reheat those. So I'm just going to kind of run that real quick here. Just like that. Just to kind of heat those up a little bit. And then I'm going to get in there and see there we go. And now it comes off pretty easy as a whole set. For the most part. One whole strip. And this one. Same kind of deal. This one fighting me. Like I said, these are not the funnest thing to do, especially when you got to do a bunch of them. And the rest of that I'll pull off with a razor blade. They stick to your fingers. They're, like I said, this is not fun. This part sucks. There we go. And then I'm going to take my razor blade, again, flat to it. Not going to have it... Uh, this is a pretty dull razor blade, okay? but, uh, but I'm going to scrape and get rid of this. Let me see if I can get some of that there like that. And you're just going to scrape this stuff off. Yes, it's going to take a titch of the finish. There's no two ways about it, you know, but uh, take it down like that. And just get all that residue off of there. So that you got a clean surface to reflect or put your cap wrap on or whatever you want to do. And just get rid of all that stuff all the way around. Smooth it out. If you're, if you're re-crest or cap wrapping them or cresting them, it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect as long as it's smooth. Um, you know, because it'll hide that stuff underneath there. So like so. Just make sure there's no high spots where glue was or anything like that on there. Get a little bit right there. And that there is a shaft that's basically ready for refletching. So I'm going to go ahead and do that to all of these, which is not going to be fun, but that's what I'm going to do. It's probably going to take me 15, 20 minutes to do it, but that's how we get them back ready for fletching. 
So now we got those all done. These three are mine that had the inserts in them. They're ready. And then these are the ones that got to be cut to length. So what I do is I make sure that my cutoff saw, which I already know I got it marked, is set to exactly what I want, which is right at 27 inches uh, with the knock in. So that's set. I'm going to plug this dude in. My saw, my saw blade is very small and very wore out. I have a replacement. I'm just too... Uh, I'm too stingy to put it on. So it takes me a second because like I said, this saw, look at how little that blade is. It's down to about half size and pretty wore out, but still works. So we're using it, but it is going to take a second to roll through these because that blade is, like I said, way past shot. So don't criticize my saw. So, but we're going to take that, set it on there. Actually, on mine, I need to move this back to that edge so that it holds solid right there. We're going to set this on, put it in here. I like to ring around one. Like I said, my saw blade is pretty bad. But that's it. We're going to go through and cut. We're going to cut every one of these. Same way. It more burns through than it actually cuts anymore. But like I said, I'm just, uh, it's lasted a long time and I'm in no hurry to change it. It still works, it just takes a little longer. Uh, but anyway, so we're gonna go through and we're gonna cut all those shafts down and have them ready. Now for this part, I'm making my double inserts. Okay, there's a double insert next to a standard insert. You can see the difference. This is my homemade 200 grain inserts and it's made by taking two inserts like this, one that will go into shaft that way, and this one here will actually butt up against there and is held in place by one of these screws, or these little nails here that go under, or through the holes in the bottom and get pinned together. I made videos about this, but they're actually pinned in through the center of that and through the bottom of that pinned together so they can't come apart. Uh, makes for 195 grain inserts, what that ends up being there. And, uh, but I got a grind as you can see, I started on that one. I gotta grind the head off of one so that it can fit in the shaft like that. So that's what I'm doing right here. I will set you on here and you can see it, but I've done this in my arrow making video. I show this in full detail, the whole process. Um, I'm not gonna get go through it all right now, but I will show you. I take these heads and I just work them, like that one should be cool enough now again. Cause usually I gotta go around a couple times and let it cool, but. I'm just taking this on my grinder, spinning it as I go. I am wearing safety glasses. I don't know if you can see my head in this. And I'm just working that right down. And getting rid of that burr that's on there. And it takes a second. Because what happens is it gets hot. Like right now, see, you can see how that's pretty much no more burr on there. That's getting pretty hot to hold. I'll have to come back and hit that one one more time. But then I take a new one, start spinning it right around, and just grinding that burr down. Is it time consuming? Yes, but I got so many of these, and I've been, my arrows are tuned for that extra long insert already, that buying 200 grain ones uh, that are actually about a quarter inch shorter, Maybe it may, may not make a difference, but I have so many, I have hundreds of these, hundreds of them. And, uh, and like I said, my arrows are tuned for that double insert that I'm using. So until I do run out of these or quit using the 500s because of that and go to a, a 400 spine with one, these are, this is how I'm doing it. Just, uh, you know, like I said, may not be for everybody, but it works for me. So I'll hit, hit one. And once uh, it gets too hot for my fingers here to hold on to, I could dip it in the water, but I just set it aside, grab one of the ones I was working already that's now cooled off. And it's pretty easy to see when you got that whole bird on. And that is what the finished product looks like right there. And then that will be held together on that and that becomes my insert right there like that so that's kind of the setup we're doing i'm going to finish making these and then we'll be back okay so to set these up what i do 
I take my regular full insert and I drop this nail that I cut. This is one of these nails right here and I just cut it about this long. Here's what they are. If you by chance wanted to do this, you probably won't. Um, but that's the size nails I'm using. But what I do is I just take and clip about that much off with just a pair of side cutters. You know, it doesn't have to be fancy, but that's about the length I need right there. So then I take that, I drop it right inside of here so it sticks out like this out of the bottom, okay? I take a punch that fits in there, doesn't have to be scientific, put it in there like that, turn it upside down, I'm going to set it right here on this hard metal, that's why it's plates here. I take this piece and I slide it onto that nail, and then I need my hammer. And then I'm going to take that and set that on there, and then I'm going to take this punch and put it right in there so it hits that nail, and then I'm going to smack it a couple times. It's going to peen it over, okay? Peens it over, locks it together. I straighten it out a little bit, and that is locked. That can't come apart now. Now it's one whole unit. When I put glue on there, it'll seal it right up, but that is now one complete insert set like that. So, like I said, real simple. I take this. I'm eyeballing it. Not perfect. Just need to get it pretty close to where I'm thinking I want it. Cut it like that. Take this piece, drop it into the insert. Punch goes in to hold it into place. Put it on there, grab my other piece, fish it on there, take my other punch, stick it right in the hole, find it, and then hit it. A couple times, straighten it out, like so, and there it is, locked together, can't come apart, and one insert. So they're not complicated to make, um, not at all, not, not hard to do even a little bit, but uh, that's the process I use. It's just a sweet, simple, easy uh, I, I came up with it many years ago when I wanted to, there were no 200 grain inserts available. There were no options for this or anything to do like this. And I wanted more weight up front. But for me, it's important that my broadheads are a certain number because I shoot judo so much. And a judo only comes in at 135 grains for a gluon. So I have to be able to have, and the most you can get on a, on a steel adapter is 125 grains. So I need to find a way to somehow be able to meet that combination of about 260 grains um, to, of point weight to match my judo. If I go with a 400 grain broadhead setup, I cannot shoot the judos the same way. And that bothers me. So this was the solution back in the day. Oh, I missed on that one. This was the uh, solution back in the day to be able to let me get my... Uh, you know, my, my heavy, heavy 450 grain up front point weight that I wanted and still allow me to shoot judos on a regular basis. This was the solution for that. And probably still is only one today, but now they sell 200 grain in. So you don't have to make these anymore. Son of a, I must have made that nail too small. So when that happens, we pop that out of there and then we just uh, make a... You know, we, we put a new nail in there. Again, not scientific, not rocket science. But anyway, that's how we're making those inserts. All right, now the last thing we got to do is just glue in our inserts, and then these shafts will be ready for fletching. For the fletching stuff, chopping the feathers, uh, prep, all that, I have a video. I'll link it at the end for you. It's one of the best arrow-making videos out there through every single process. A bunch of tips for you. It will be on the end screen of this at the end of the video for you. But what I got to do now, I'm basically... Just going to take my glue and we are going to glue up the uh, the inserts on here. So what I do, I stick it barely just in there like so and I'm gluing both of these inserts. Now I'm going to run a bead right down there, turn it, bring a bead right back and then one more bead on there. So it's a lot of glue but it locks it in real well. Then I'm going to take that, I got that rag handy right here so I can use it and I'm going to put that on there and I'm just going to smash that right in. And then I'm going to twist it a few times to make sure that that glue is all off the end clean. Like that. And that's uh, how we do the inserts. That's it. Now that arrow is ready to be cap dipped or, or wrapped, fletched, and set, and all my stuff done to it. So I'm just going to go through all these here and uh, just take a minute and put my inserts in them. And get them set. Oh, that one there. I might need to grind that one a touch more. Let's try this one. That's why we always kind of pre-fit them first. There you go. So we're going to glue this like this and we're
where it's at. Stick that right on that shirt. Press it right on. And wipe off the excess glue. And that's it. So that there is the process for you. That basically does, I'm bringing you around here, that's how we're doing that. I'm going to put my cap on there so my glue doesn't dry up while I'm talking here for a minute. Um, but uh, like I said, that is how, how we repurpose arrows. You know, now these arrows are 100% ready. This one here, I actually ended up having to throw out. And I, you can see I torched it because I just had to take my big double insert out of there. But the end of it, I noticed right at the end of that shaft, uh, I was getting some hair cracks right in here, right at the edge, right at the very tip. I could see some hairline fractures in there, and I'm not playing games with that stuff. Uh, that arrow just been through too much crap, so that one got thrown out. But uh, otherwise, these other ones are all good. All I got to do is, like I said, put the inserts in them, have them set, have them ready, and then I'm going to fletch them up my way and uh, make them exactly right. But there is a video coming up. You're probably seeing it about right now somewhere in one of the corners here on how to make arrows start to finish with the whole detail. So thanks for watching. We'll talk to you later. Bye.